If your child is learning their ABCs, making the alphabet out of Play-Doh or modeling clay is a great activity to help them learn. It's fun and easy. I'll show you how. <laughs> to make our Play-Doh alphabet, you need Play-Doh and some tools. You can buy Play-Doh tools at a toy store or you can use things lying around the house. You need a smooth surface to work on, a hard rolling tool like a can or a jar, a plastic knife to cut with, and then you can use whatever objects you find around your house that might make an interesting texture or shape in your Play-Doh. Let's start with blue and make a letter A. Using both of my hands to apply even pressure, I'm gonna roll the Play-Doh out into a rope. Once it gets as long as I'd like it, I'm gonna trim off the end, here and here. Fold this like that, trim off this, and there's our A. For B, let's try something a little different. We're gonna roll our dough out flat using the side of our jar. Flipping it over as you go, so that you get a nice and even pancake. Now I'm gonna use my can to cut out two circles. Put them in the middle like this. And then for the rest of my pancake, I'm gonna cut out a long line like this and set it along the sides of my circles. Now to make it look more like a B, I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center of each. Hey, bottle cap starts with B. And there we have our blue B. C is next. To make the C, I'm going to do another rope with purple. Rolling it out, nice and even. Trim off one end. And there's a C. But it's not that interesting, so I'm gonna use my knife to add little lines. C. Now to make the D, I'm gonna flip over my C and take some more of my rope I just made and put it on the end. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add some dots with the back of my pencil. D for dots. D. For E, I'm gonna use purple again. And roll it out flat. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut two equal strips. And I'll trim up the ends to make them neat. I put one here and cut the other into three parts. There's your E. Take away the bottom and you have your F. For G, let's use green. I'll make a nice long rope again. Curve it up. Put the end in, like that, and there's your G. For H, let's use our green to roll out a nice big pancake. And this time I wanna add some texture, so I'm gonna use one of my cans to roll ridges along it. Then using my knife, I'm gonna cut a rectangle. Then I'll cut out the top and the bottom, and there's our H. For I, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna roll up each little piece and make them into a ball. start to form my letter I. 
and there's an eye. The cool thing about the little balls is you can easily rearrange them. To your next letter, J. Now K. So for K, I'm going to make a thicker rope than I've made before. Using my knife, I'll cut almost halfway down there and cut through the other side too. Flip it this way. Open up the legs and there's our K. For L, let's do another flat piece. So first I'll make my long rope. Then I'm gonna roll down with my jar, smoothing it out as I go. Trim off the end, cut a short piece, then a longer piece, L for longer. Put them both together, and there's our L. I'm gonna use a chopstick to add lines. Line starts with L. Okay, M, M, M. Let's start with a mound, like the letter M for mound, and roll it into almost like a triangle until it starts to look like a little bit of a mountain. Now we're gonna trim off the sides. Cut down the middle. And there's our M and all its beautiful mountains. Next up is N. Let's stretch out a piece of rope, nice and long. Just make an N very simply. Like that. To make our O, I'll use orange. And I'll roll it into the biggest pancake yet. I'll use my largest can to cut out a circle. Then I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center. There's my O. For P, I'll cut a long strip from my leftover pancake and put it there. For Q, put a little strip in right there. There's our Q. For R, I'll cut the back of our circle off. We'll add a strip back in here and a little leg there. And there's our R. For S, I'm gonna use green again and do something a little bit special. I'm gonna roll out a rope but make it thin at one end and a little bit thicker at the other. And this will help you remember your S because it looks like a snake. For my T, I'm gonna use the green again, roll out another rope Turn the ends. And use my forks, tines, to put a little print in it. Or add texture, which also starts with T. All right, we're winding down. For you, let's take two long ropes and twist them together. Now I'm twisting them up. Turn them up like that, up like the U. And there's our U. Now our last letters are kind of similar. So we're going to do them in a special way. 
once again, we'll roll out a big pancake. This one happens to be pink. I'm gonna cut four equal length strips. First, let's make our V. There's our V. Then we add two more. There's our W. Now we take those two and flip them over. There's our X. And take one away. We have our Y. For our final letter, we use our strips again shape a Z. But let's make this Z something that kids can remember by giving it a little something extra. Let's give it stripes like a zebra. Z for zebra. And there we have it. That's our alphabet. Try making alphabet letters out of Play-Doh with your kids. Not only will they have fun, the hands-on activity will help them learn and remember their ABCs. Show me all the cool letters you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Today we're gonna show you how to explore numbers with all kinds of manipulatives. Sensory and hands-on activities really help your child relate and give them a number sense. Number sense is the ability to connect, understand, and relate to numbers. These activities are so simple. You already have so many objects around your house, you can use anything. The sky's the limit for these activities. A variety of colorful manipulatives or other household objects like small toys, beads, pom-poms, or even fun foods like gummies, number magnets, or other numbered manipulatives like dominoes, printable 10 frame, or other printables, markers, dice. The first activity we did was taking a number line and getting my children to relate to the numbers by placing the manipulatives on the number line. We are gonna do some fun things with Yay! numbers today. So see this long number line right here? It's that's what I was going to ask you. What is a go-to? So see all these fun objects that we have in front of us? Yeah. I want you to match and work together, okay? How many items it is with the number. So like if you see a number one, how many items are you going to put on that number? One. One. You're one. right. Yeah. And we're going to go all the way to number nine. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. I okay. one. Oh, good job. So Rachel and Benjamin, you can choose a number to start with. We have, we have to do the ones on there. You can use any of the objects you want and put that many items on top well, of the I'm numbers. I'm gonna do five. Ooh. five How many do you need for six, that? Six. Six. One, two. You might just stack them. Three, ah. One, two, three, and one, eight. Two, three, four, you can make five, two piles if you need to. Six, seven, eight. Yes. Uh -oh. I let my children choose what items they wanted to put on the number line. And then I asked them questions like, is that bigger or smaller? More or less than? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Asking a child those questions gets their mind really thinking about it and connecting seeing an item to what they see in their head as well. So we have eight objects and then on the number eight and nine on the number nine. Which one has more? Nine. 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 Does it look like there are more? One, no. The next activity we did was counting by twos. I let my children take wooden coins and stack them up in pairs of twos. Then I asked them, how many sets of two do you see? This is a great way for a child to learn subitizing, and that is simply that when they look at a group of objects, they instantly know what number it is. We're gonna do something new. We are going to learn to count by twos. Wow. So I need you to take two out of there, Silas. Do two. Yep, put those down there. Now Benjamin, put two on top of his. There you go. Rachel, your turn. Add 
have yours. How many groups of two do we have? Five groups. Five groups? How do you know that? Count them for me. One, One two, three, four, five. Good. We've learned to count by twos as well. Can you repeat after me? Two, two four, four, six, six eight, eight, ten. ten. Good well, job. Little Silas really surprised me when not only could he count how many groups of two there were, he could also count how many groups of five there were. So you really saw that he made that connection in his brain. Five, five ten. ten. The next activity we did was working with number bonds. This is a great way for children to really visualize how many items equal another number. All right guys, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna take a number and we are gonna break it up into two parts. We need to create one number and then we are gonna learn how to break it up into two groups. All right, what number should we put here? Four. Okay, can you write a four? Down, cross, up, down. Wow, good number work, buddy. Really impressive. Okay, so Benjamin has a five. Rachel has, what number is that down there? Eight. An eight. That's right, an eight. So. Wait, I think I know. We are we're gonna. doing three and one. How do you know that? But we're not gonna use our markers. We're gonna use things. I know. Oh, I have something that. yummy for you to I use. Know. It is something so delicious. It's over here. Gummies! Using number bonds is a great way to ask a child things like, are two plus three and three plus two the same? They can see it and visualize it and know that they are indeed the same thing. So Rachel did her eight with two groups of four. Is there another way you can make eight? Well, how else can you make? Five and three. Five and three, let me see that. Okay. Silas, how else can we make four? Now, divide it differently. That's right, put it all in the number four. Now. And then one more makes five. Oh, you're right. But if I have two here, how many do I need to put there to make four? Good job. You did it. I did the now, treasure chest. Now, time for your sweet reward. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> The next thing we did is we played a game called Roll a Number. This was a lot of fun for my kids. They took a dice, got to roll it, and then put the number in the ones place and in the tens place. All right, guys, we are going to play a game. Are you ready? Yeah! Okay, we're gonna take, each of you have a die. We are going to roll it. At first, I need you to pick out a color to write with. So everybody, roll, go ahead and roll your die. I got a one. See what number. So put it in the, in the ones place. Now roll the dice again and see what you get. Me, I got guys. two. I got a six. <laughs> six. I got Put a it in the tens place. Put what number it is in the blanks. I got a 61. Then write it again. Sil got Rachel got a 61. I got Silas, you got a 65. So guess what? You won. You, you won that round, because it's the biggest. Can you circle your number 65? Like Next, we turned it into a fun game, where whoever got the biggest number won that round, and they circled their numbers. At the end, we added up and saw who the winner was. Who? can get the most of the biggest numbers, okay? The most? All right, yes, we're gonna do the whole page. Ready? Roll your dice again. Put one. it in one place, wow. right here. Put a one right there. One. Good. And Good. Then put a four oh, right here. I did that and made it come Now slow down, we're gonna see who won that second round. I got it. Ready, four? Fourteen. What number did you get, Rachel? One, four. Fourteen. Three. Benjamin got 12. Silas got 41. You so won again. again. Can you circle oh your God. number 41? Good. Okay, guys, we're gonna do it again. So you got 44, Benjamin got 51, 51. Rich got 24. 20. Who's the biggest? Me. Benjamin won. Good job, brother. Okay, now count all your circles. This is just counted as one, two, two. Four. One, two, three, four. He has three that he won on. Four, Rachel, five. how many do you have? One, two, six. Okay. I, mean I got one. I have four. Okay. I have four. Rachel is the winner. Good Yay. job. Good job, Rachel. Good job. Yay. <laughs> Lastly, we did a game that dealt with the concept of a 10 frame. This helps children really start thinking about numbers in base 10. So these are called 10 frames. Do you see that there are 10 rectangles, Silas, see up here? And that's why you have the number 10 written here. How many beads do you have there? Four. Four, so we put a number four. How many more beads do we need to make 10? One. There you go. Two. Three, four, Good. five, six. Good, so oh, you needed six more. Can you find the number six in here for mama? 
You see number six? Yeah, all six. <gasps> Good, can you put that in the blank for me? So Rachel and Benjamin, see how many you have at the top. I have one, one I have three. Three. Four, five. Now add your uh, items, fill in the blank, and see how many you need. And then I you can fill need. that in. Good, Benjamin. Well, let's see if we did it all, guys. Today's activities were a lot of fun for my kids because they got to do a lot of hands-on activities. They took manipulatives, got to connect them to numbers, and really solidly make that foundation and connect numbers. These activities were great for Rachel and Benjamin because they've learned a lot about addition and subtraction, but they got to really apply the knowledge that they've already learned. 85, 90, 95, 100! 100. Hey everyone, welcome to our series on reading at home with your kids. Today we're going to be reading Rainbow, Rainbow. Spending a few minutes reading with your kids is a great way to get them reading ready, but it also shows them they can have a fun time while they do it. Today we're going to give you some tips and some tricks on how to make reading come to life for your kids. Let's go. With all of the distractions in life between technology and, and busy schedules, it's easy to forget how important it is to read with your children. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Rainbow Rainbow. I know my girls love rainbows and we also love reading aloud. Okay guys, so here we are again. We're gonna read another book. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right, good, good, good. So, what does this say? Ali, you wanna take a crack at that? Rainbow, Rainbow by Harry and Sana Joe. Excellent job, let's get right into it. All right, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on here. Hi, Bo Peep. What a beautiful day. And look, it's a rainbow. Bo Peep knows a song about rainbows. Let's sing it with her. Oh, look at this. What do you see? There are a lot of flowers in here and rainbows. This is a really pretty place. I wonder what's on the other side of the hill. You don't want Treasure. Wonder? Treasure. Look, I tre see treasure. Uh, Lena, what do you think's on the other side of the hill? Uh, I obviously see treasure. It could be anything. People. What? People. People? People? Yeah, I guess so. I guess you keep going over the hills, you're gonna run into some other people. When reading with your kids, feel free to take it really slow. Just take your time. Look at the pictures, uh, let them point out things that interest them and keep them engaged. All right, so let's turn the page and see what's next. Rainbow, rainbow, high and bright. Rainbow, rainbow, made of light. Excellent. There are more flowers. This is really pretty. Yeah, scene. look at these ones. Yeah. Wait, it's a song. Lennon, you take it. Take it away. <laughs> 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 all right. So from the clouds down to the ground, I see colors all around. Okay, so we're talking about colors. Can you guys name any colors? Purple, blue, blue, green, yellow. Orange, red. Rainbow Rainbow is a great book for reading with your kids because it helps them learn their colors and they also learn to make the connection between the color and the word they see on the page. Over time, with practice, that'll become reading. Hey, do you guys know when rainbows happen? <gasps> I know, I know, I know. It's raining and sunny. Ooh, when it's raining and sunny? Yeah, when the sun is shining and it's raining, that's for sure. All right. Red, orange, Yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet too. Ah, so indigo is that color blue that we didn't know the name for, so we learned something that's really cool. There are so many benefits to reading books at home. Kids gain confidence from practice, and the more they practice and the more time you spend reading books together, the more likely they are to participate in school. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet too. Oh, you just made a song of anything. That's pretty good, though. <laughs> if you have older kids and want to level up on reading time, try letting them take a turn to read to you or the family. It'll give them an opportunity to build some confidence, especially when it comes to reading in front of others. Let's turn the page. A rainbow. Who has a pot of goals at the end of the rainbow? The leprechaun. The leprechauns. Uh, so many beautiful colors. Goodbye, Bo Peep. Let me read that. So many beautiful Colors. Making a song of anything. Goodbye, in the book. Bo Peep. Goodbye, Bo Peep. When you engage in at home reading, let your kids pick out their own books. It doesn't matter if the book is easy for them to read. All reading is good. 
Okay, all right, so that's the end of that. So Rainbow Rainbow by Harry and Sana Joe. <laughs> A great way to take reading at home to the next level is to come up with a game or a craft that goes along with what you just read. It'll give you an opportunity to discuss some of the themes as well as give the kids an opportunity to get creative and have some hands-on learning. Construction paper in the colors of the rainbow, crayons or washable markers, scissors, glue stick. All right, I have a craft. Are you ready for the craft? Yeah! Today, we are going to use our hands to put these hands together in rainbow order. We're gonna take a sheet of paper. You pick what type of what color paper you want. I'll purple. help you read it. Purple. We're gonna start with purple, okay. For our rainbow rainbow activity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these together and we're gonna end up with this. To begin with, we would take a piece of construction paper and a marker and we would trace our hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands down in the center. I'm sure you guys have done this at school at some point. Get to tracing. Trace, trace, trace. Trace, trace, trace. Trace, trace, trace. trace. Yeah. I should mention also that when you trace, you're probably going to get a little in your hand. So investing in washable markers might be a good idea. All right. Wow. So everybody take a minute to uh, appreciate your... Uh, Okay. Your ink stains, yeah, everybody, everybody. Uh, See, I got, I got yeah. a little green on mine. Sticky. You get the blue right there, a little stickiness. Once you trace that, then you're gonna cut it out and you'll end up with this. So now it's time for to snip, snip. <laughs> snip, snip, just cut it, cut the parts off, the big parts off, and then they'll be out of your way. So when you go in for the detail, Okay. It won't be as big a deal. We're gonna take your glue. Uh, you can use any type of glue or adhesive that you feel is safe for you and your children. And we're going to put some right here. After you've done that several times over, you have the final product, a beautiful handmade hand rainbow. Hey, let's give a big smile on the camera. Mama yeah. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, cool. Well, Mine no. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Quality reading time instills a lifelong love of learning. And we hope this video encourages you to incorporate reading into your everyday life. If you have questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks again for watching.
Hello everyone, today we're going to make a liquid density tower. This will teach us about density. Ooh, I love this density. It's so cool. Okay, put it in very slowly. It, it floats. floats. There's a lot that floats. Let's go. The supplies you'll need for this activity glass vase, honey, corn syrup, maple syrup, whole milk, dish soap, water, vegetable oil, rubbing alcohol, lamp oil, mixing cups, turkey baster, food coloring, bolt, popcorn kernel, dye, cherry tomato, bead, soda bottle cap, ping pong ball, dry erase board, dry erase marker. Come on you guys. Do you know what we're gonna make today? What? What? We're gonna make something called a liquid density tower. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Put your goggles on. We're gonna be mad scientists. <laughs> <laughs> to begin making your liquid density tower, first measure out equal parts of all nine liquid ingredients. Don't forget to add some food coloring to the water and rubbing alcohol to make the colors pop. Okay, first we're gonna use the honey and we're gonna use all these materials. We're gonna layer them all the way up in this this glass jar, okay? But we're gonna have to use the same amount. You know why we're putting them in this order? Why? why? Because we're learning about density and what do you think each one of these things has um, that are different? Uh, I think we're that going this in this is order. The, I think that this is the heaviest, so we'll go straight to the bottom. Let's see. This one's a little lighter than the honey, so it will float on top. Then carefully pour the first three layers, the honey, the corn syrup, and then the maple syrup. Can you measure some honey in there? Yep. Make sure you stay at 88 ounces. Okay. All right, that's good, Mohan. I think that's good. Okay. What can you tell between the difference? You took, how long did it take you to pour, McLean? It took me like three minutes. <laughs> it took you a little longer, didn't it? All right, let's try pouring them in our tower, okay? Okay. We're gonna check right in the middle so that we don't get this it on the sides. If you wanna scrape the rest of it out, you can get a little bit more out. Time for some corn syrup. And try to pour it just slowly right to the middle. See if we can slower. This looks so cool. Can you see it separating, Reese? Yeah. It will separate. Look at my creation! <laughs> For the milk and the other ingredients, carefully use a turkey baster and squeeze it lightly against the side of the container. This way, each layer layers neatly on top. So with the milk, then we're gonna do same measurement, eight ounces. Just squeeze it and then Put it going in the straight down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just when you squeeze it, squeeze it down the side. Like down the side? Yeah, I'm gonna squeeze it where it runs down the side. Cause we're gonna... Yeah, like that. Liquid dish soap. You're a messy scientist. Haha. <laughs> All science has messy bits. Will it mix in with the milk we just did? I don't know, let's see. What do you think? I think it will. Do you think the dish soap is more dense than the milk. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa! I would have thought the dish soap was more dense than the milk, wouldn't you? Oh, you can see yeah, it going it. down from the milk. Ooh, I love this density. It's so cool. Now with water, remember we want to make it colorful. So what color should we make the water? <gasps> blue. Oh, can I make it blue? Sure. Okay. Just right, how blue. many drops do you think we need? Two. Drop. Let's try Wow. This is going to be great. It's very dark. It's kind of mixing with the yellow, but it looks really cool. It's you can see it going up from the milk. It's like, okay. I think that if we just let it sit there for quite a while, then it will go back up to the very top. Density can be a really hard concept for kids to understand. That's why building a tower like this is a great hands-on experiment to help them kind of understand what it means. Would you have thought that vegetable oil was less dense than water or milk? I would, I pretty much thought that this would be at the bottom beside honey and this would the water would be on the top because water is very light less dense okay, what <laughs> color are we going to do for this red oh wow that was okay okay so let's oh it's fun look at it you can see it well, yeah so we know this one can, we don't have to be as careful because it looks like it's hopping down and then separating pretty pretty immediate oh look at this in the middle, it looks like a rainbow. And now you've got a liquid density tower. Oh, I can see all nine layers, can you? Yeah, I can Some see of them blended. Yeah, and what does that tell us if they blended? That then it was a kind of a little bit. That those densities were very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Want to take this activity to the next level? Try taking small objects from around your house and dropping them in the container. 
Even make your own predictions and see where they land. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some items in there and we're gonna see where they go, okay? So over here is our chart. You see our prediction chart? Yep. We're gonna try to predict where each part is gonna go. Okay, so first we have a bolt. Feel it, is it heavy or light? It's kinda heavy and it's really hard. Hard and heavy, a metal. Which level do you think the bolt is gonna go to? You think it's gonna go to the honey, uh -huh. okay? So you said honey. Ren, where do you think it's gonna go? Water. Water, okay, mm -hmm. that would be here. You think it's gonna go to the water. I think it's going to fall to the milk. I think it's gonna to go to the syrup. You think, which syrup? The Corn syrup, maple syrup. Maple syrup, okay. You wanna drop it in very gently, because it is metal. We don't want the glass it's to break, so let's see what it does. Honey. Put it right in the middle. You think it's gonna go to the honey? Oh goodness, it where'd it go? It went to the honey. It went to the syrup. No, it it looks like it went to the very bottom. The very okay, so that was not as hard as these items. This is the one we're gonna do next. What does it feel like? Don't drop it. It's so heavy because it's so soft. It's so soft and smooth and small? Mm-hmm. Well, where's this popcorn kernel gonna go? I think it's gonna mm -hmm. go to the lamp oil. I think it's gonna go I to think, the soap. I think it's gonna okay, go so to the Okay, so Reese says lamp oil. Take the popcorn kernel and can you drop it in there? Drop it right on. Where's it gonna go? <gasps> Where'd it go? In the black. Oh, we can't see it. It's hiding. It's, it's in half in the milk and it's half in the maple syrup. Wow. Isn't that cool? Making predictions is a great way to boost your child's learning. They can take what they've learned and then make educated guesses and predict where they think the object will fall. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the die. It feels hard and light. It feels light? Okay, where do you think it's gonna fall? Do you think it's as heavy as the bolt? Right to the front? Oh, look at all those levels. I see it, it's right there. Reese, where do you think that tomato's gonna go? I think that it's gonna go in the vegetable. In the vegetable oil, okay. It's right there, I can see it. It's right there on the dish soap. What's the next item, McLean? Can you read it on the board? It's a bead. A bead. It's really light and it's really hard. Let's see where a bead falls. It floats. It floats oh, all wow. the way up. Why do you think it floats all the way to the top? That oh, it's very, very light. Did you notice something about the bead? It has a hole in it. It has a hole in it. So what does that mean? So that means it has to stay up in the air. Well, there's some air maybe in there and it's keeping it afloat. We hope you and your family had fun making your own liquid density tower. Don't forget to tell us how it went in the comments below and share with us what you learned with the Show Me How community. Thanks for watching. Hey, what other object would you pick if you were picking something different? A crown. I, a crayon? <laughs> crayon. Oh, I wonder if a I crayon would float. I <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be doing a read aloud with my son Lachlan of the book Dinosaur Stomp. He's excited about it and I gotta tell you I am too. Reading at home is an opportunity to explore their interest and gain a love of reading. During this series we give you tips and tricks on how to bring reading to life for you and your little ones. So let's get to it. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Dinosaur Stomp. We love this one and we love to get up and get active and if you have a chance with your kids, there's some really cool dances that go along with it. Ah, so it's the moment we've been waiting for. It's Dinosaur Stomp by Harry and Sana Joe. Are you ready? Yeah, all right, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on in Dinosaur Land. Mary and Eep are playing dinosaurs. Did you? Dinosaurs! Oh yeah, that's right. It's time for a snack. What will they eat? What color is that? Oh. Oh yeah, nice. The Dinosaur Stomp is a great reading resource. It teaches your kids entertaining rhymes and new vocabulary through repetition and movement. What's she doing? Thinking. She is thinking, that's right. Vegetables. Did you know that some dinosaurs ate only veggies? Did you know that? Did you know that? Do you eat your greens? Yeah. You do? No. No, we eat uh, broccoli. We eat broccoli, we eat, we eat a lot of kale. You eat kale? You eat your kale, most days. I don't like kale. Oh, well, you know what? You'll grow out of that. You gotta eat your veggies. You wanna get big, strong like a dinosaur. All right, so. Okay. <laughs> 
Dinosaurs have great big feet that stomp, stomp, stomp. You know what your feet are? <laughs> there you go, yeah. That stomp, 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 that's right. Dinosaurs have great big, what are those? Teeth. Teeth. That chomp, chomp, chomp. Can you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. As you're reading, be sure to focus on highlighting new vocabulary and rhyming words. Using a call and response method is a great way to get your kid to participate. I'm a saurus, stomp, stomp. You're a saurus, chomp, chomp. I want, I want to turn into a blue one. You want to turn into a blue one? Well, then you have to practice your chomp, chomp. Dinosaurs have great big claws. Can you show me claws? Let me see your claws. Come on, man. You got to have claws. There you go, claws. Orange one. Red one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. Dinosaurs have great big jaws that munch, munch, munch. What do you like to munch on, Lachlan? Anything. Anything? Show me how you munch. <laughs> there you go, yeah. There are so many benefits to reading books at home. It helps kids learn decision making by choosing the book of the day. They have the opportunity to read at their own pace. You can dig deep, you can recognize patterns, and explore their interest. It inspires a love of reading and learning. Look at her, look at her, look at her crunch face. You make a crunch face? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, 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 munch. Oh, no, don't munch me. That's not the game. If you have a chance, be sure to check out the Mother Goose Club video for Dinosaur Stomp. It'll give your kids a chance to chomp and stomp on their own a little bit, and you can incorporate some of the moves while you're reading the book. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And this is the word. What do you think that word right there says? Uh, dinosaur. Yes, good job, man. You read the most important word in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chomp, yeah, just chomp, chomp them all. all yeah, just chomp them. Yeah, yeah. The, thanks for playing dinosaurs with us. Yeah. See, that's it, you, you, you got the hang of it now. Goodbye. After you read the book the first time, ask them if they'd like to read it again. And maybe this time you can trade off on some of the speaking parts. It'll get them to be more comfortable with the material and get them to participate. Construction paper, scissors, glue stick, paper clips. I want you to help me make these hats over here. Can you, make, can you help me make these hats? Yeah. Do you have a few minutes today? I don't have a paper. Well, I'm gonna give you, would you like a paper? I like a piece yeah. of paper. We are going to be creating dinosaur hats for our book, Dinosaur Stomp. You'll take your construction paper and you're gonna hold it vertically and then you're going to cut an inch, inch and a half long pieces. These pieces will come out looking like this and these pieces will be used for your headband and for your spine. And then you'll cut it. You cut as straight as you can, okay? And it doesn't matter if, if you don't do it perfect, you just do your best, okay? Okay, so go ahead and cut your strips. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, okay? And then you're gonna take two other pieces of construction paper and you're gonna cut them horizontally. And you're gonna get 10 strips about two inches wide, like this. Yeah, now put your fingers there. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you like the grip? You like the grip? Yeah, see, it's different, right? Yeah, it's a whole different thing. Oh, see, now you got more control, more power. DIY crafts are obviously a lot of fun, but crafting with tools like scissors, glue, paper clips, and those types of things are an opportunity for your kids to develop their fine motor skills. Along with following directions, this activity becomes really, really good for listening and communication skills as well. But most importantly, this gives you an opportunity to spend time together and get creative. Yeah, <laughs> good, good job, dude. You'll end up with these a uh, little bit fatter uh, strips, and these will become your spikes. And how we make those, we're gonna fold these over, and maybe about a half inch up, you wanna start cutting them into a triangle. I want you to look something. Will you inspect something for me? You know what it means to inspect? Inspect means to look at it closely and determine whether or not it's working. Look, look, Lachlan, I'm gonna go about a half inch. Do you know how big an inch is? Do you? You do, can you show me? Look here, bud. An inch is about this big. 
Okay. We want to do a half inch. It's about that big. Is it about this big? Well, that's a few inches. <laughs> so after you have your spike, you're going to take your spine and you're going to put these two pieces together. So you throw a little glue right here. And then you're going to put this on there. Let's start up, start up here. And then you stand your spikes up. And you're going to glue this together. Take a paper clip and that will hold it together while the glue dries. You'll do that over and over and over again 10 times. Then you're going to attach it to the front of the headband like so. And it will give you a wonderful, magical dinosaur headband. Lachlan, can you say roar? And I crown you king of the dinosaurs? Roar! Roar! That's very good. Ta da! How do you feel about that? I make this one fit your head a little bit better, but I think you look great. You feel great? You look great. <laughs> King of the dinosaurs, give me one more roar. <laughs> yes, excellent. That's all for today. We hope these videos help you incorporate reading into your everyday life. For more activities and tips on reading, be sure to check out some of our other videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments or even just to let us know what reading means to you and your family. Thanks again for watching. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to show you how to make a fraction bird. It's a great way to start the conversation about holes, parts, and fractions. So, let's get to it. Hey, what's up guys? Today, Isla and I are going to be setting up a craft for you that we like to call a fraction bird. A fraction bird. I know how. I'm going to show you how. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. Now, I'm going to show you how to make your very own fraction bird. So, first thing you want to do, you want to create your holes. The way we do that is we take a bowl or whatever you have this round in the size that you like and draw a circle around it. And first thing we have to do, if we're gonna talk about holes and fractions, is establish what a hole is. Go for it, you can do it. Excellent, that is a circle. And you're gonna cut that out, you can keep that, and you'll come out with one of these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the circle out. Would you like to do the honors? Sure. Yeah, might as well. I'll, can you cut through all these sheets and just cut one circle? Maybe. Yeah, it feels like cardboard though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a squeeze with some muscle. Yeah. There you go. All right, we'll get all of our holes at once and we'll start to break them down. If you want to make smaller pieces, if you want to take your holes into halves, fold them over. If you want to take your halves into quarters, you can fold them over and literally just open them back up and cut along the lines. One, two, three, and four. Four snips, you have four quarter pieces. If you want to go down to eighths, you fold your quarters in half. If you want to go down to sixteenth, fold your eighths in half as well. So now we have a whole bunch of holes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these holes and turn them into halves. So, oh, you have cut. any ideas about how to do that? Cut through the middle? Yeah, what you can do is I fold it over. Fold it over so you can get that line right down the center. See exactly where it is. Make sure those edges over there sync up. Well, yeah, they might be a little wonky, but do the best you can. Aww. And you just cut along the line, just like that. You may want to label these. That keeps the conversation going and direct it around mm -hmm. fractions. You'll find yourself referring to uh, pieces as their fraction and their color rather than the size. I have a half, you have a half. One, two, is a half. Excellent. Do the same thing on that one. And then we're going to cut it into fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and get your head stuck. Ah, oh, you do. I actually do. Well. I do with that scoop. Do you? Well, that is a good thing. Yeah. Then you can fold it one more time and then you'll have it and you can just cut them out all at once. You can cut through the middle right there. You can cut anywhere you see a line right now. And you'll get a fourth out of it and open that up. Cut it again. Now you have quarters or one-fourths, and you can tell you have four pieces here that'll make a hole. 
Making a Fraction Bird isn't just a big bunch of fun, but it's also an opportunity to talk about some of the biggest concepts in math. Holes, parts, and fractions. All right, so now we're going to the fourth. So we're gonna write one fourth. Do you know how to write one fourth? Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. And what you can do is you can tell. You can just look at it. That's right, paper. you can just look at it. You put them together, and that, that right there is the same as this, and you know that one half is equal to two fourths. Another big math idea is the concept of being equal. One way to really get the point across is to introduce it with the concept of fairness. Kids understand, Joey got 10 cookies, Molly ought to have 10 cookies too. That's fair, that's equal. All right, so now, since you have your fourths and you have your halves, what would be next? you have any idea what's next? Bam, now, count those. Count them and tell me how many of them are there. Eight. Eight, okay, so one it eight. one eight. That is absolutely correct. So while you're working on work on a one eighth right there, put a one over the eight on all of those. Every single one of these doubles. Every time you cut it in half, the, the bottom number, which is called the denominator, doubles. Two, four, eight, and then if you double eight, two times eight is, do you know that? I don't know. Ah, it's okay, you probably do know. Right there are all of your pieces. 16. You see over here, 1 16th. So 1 16th, the next fraction. So we know what's going on, we know how we know what's going on because we can look and see the size of it. So if I turn these over, you know that two halves, whether you see it or not, is a whole. Okay, so now you have all your parts and pieces for your fraction bird. Now we're gonna put it on a board and make it look something like this. Are you ready? Are you ready to build a bird? Y E S. What is, what's that spell? Yes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yes. Okay, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. You do your thing. You can either copy the ones over here, I'm or you can, this. yeah, Apple, I mean, please feel free. You can even have a, a plump bird. You can have a, a bird with a hole there. And if you wanna change the colors up, you could take, you could have a bird with a red belly and a another half yellow top. You wanna do something different? I'm doing it my own way. Load it up. Once you get them lined up, here's what I want you to do. Then glue it. That's my recommendation to you. Now you can glue it down if you want to. I'm just saying, line it up, get it the way you want it, and then I'm you can I'm just saying don't tell me that because I know what I'm doing. Oh, then knock yourself out. <laughs> Once you get the basic sort of layout together, then you can okay, get- now this. what do I need? Then you can embellish. Start the, on the- there's, a, there's an eighth beak there. You can do that. Let's get this baby's glued and stuck. Stick it. Let me know, is this is this the right place for it? Right there? Yeah. Right yeah. there? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put it right there. All right, so I got one, I got a purple 16th here. <laughs> a purple 16th here. All right, I get, did I get another one? I get to do two? Yeah. What? <laughs> get them a little closer. You want me closer? Should I have them overlapping a little bit maybe? Yeah, like that. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, okay. And there you have a fraction bird. <laughs> He'll hop. My bird's name is Olivia. We hope you and your family have a great time trying out this activity. And when you do, let us know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Today we're learning all about musical patterns. This is a really fun activity for your kids to get those creative juices flowing and just to have a blast. You can use any instruments you already have laying around the house or you can make your own with simple pots and pans or create your own little shaker. Today we are gonna do rhythmic Patterns. Do you guys remember what patterns do? Patterns repeat themselves. Right. themselves. Good job, all right. Well, we are gonna make musical patterns that repeat themselves using our instruments. Y'all ready? Yeah! We think of patterns as visual patterns, but there's so much more than that. There's also rhythmic patterns. You ready? Okay, copy mama. Good, now listen again. When you answer what comes next in a song, a beat, or a rest, it also helps kids learn pattern recognition. Are right, you want to try it, Rach? Uh-huh, two times. Good! 
Here we go. Okay, can you do that? Me, yeah. all right. I don't know why. Okay, listen again. I'll do it one more time. Are you ready? I know. I do. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> this is a great way for them to learn how to put together music and also to dance and just have fun. I know you I like that. This. Okay. Good. Nice. I'm gonna try. Tell me if I'm doing what you did. Yes. Is that right? Uh, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And now do what I did. Okay. And then you did this. I think that. Good. And then the drum I did. Oh yeah. Research shows music and math are intertwined in our brains from an early age. From the clap, clap, clap of hands as you play patty cake with your baby, or banging on the pots and pans, they are all linked to your child's early math skills, like counting, patterning, sequencing, and spatial awareness. Well, tempo is how fast or slow something is. So we can play something really slow, like this. Or we can play something Really fast. Wait, go. Oh. Woo! That made me want to dance. Oh. Whoa, that's Good job, really buddy. Loud. Speaking of loud, is it soft or, or loud? Good. Can I do it soft? I want to like it. Teaching patterns through music will not only be a fun family time, but likely benefit your child's cognitive and physical abilities down the line. Playing instruments bought or homemade also helps develop smaller hand muscle movement and hand-eye coordination. This is a playful way to practice fine motor skills. I have another idea for us. How about we do some rhythmic patterns using our bodies? So Mama's gonna do one and you guys copy me, okay? Do that just three times. Okay, now I'm gonna add on to Wait, it. You ready? No, I don't do it. You weren't ready? All right, I'll do it again. Ready? Just listen. Good, Silas. All right, I'm gonna add on to it. You ready? Nice. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I like that stomp. Let's do it again. patterns in jump rope games, or clapping songs, or songs that rhyme like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Can we all make up our own things to this song? Sure, we can make up our own things. Or how about if we do it all together? You want to do all it? All together. Twinkle Little Star. All right, let's do it with you. You ready? Okay. Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. Oh, I like it. So the next time you get one of those songs stuck in your head, remember, these activities are laying the foundation for greater pattern recognition and creation. Your kids are developing fine motor and gross motor skills. Who knew this play was so educational? Do you guys remember these shapes? We've used them before. Uh -huh. We've made patterns with them, but now we're gonna make musical patterns with them. How do you do that? I will show you. All right, so Silas has a little square. So the yellow square Me. is a clap. clap. After clap, we're gonna do. Okay, but just one sound. One clip. Okay, flat, slap. I think I'm gonna add purple. Purple? What that do you want that sound to be? What if we rub our hands together? See what sound it makes. That's, That's a great sound. 
great sound. Okay, clap. clap. Good. All right, now, guess what? Sound. So what do we repeat? Clap. Clap. Ready? Let's do it together. Clap. And Good, you guys. And now, I want to add this at the very end. We can do a, a new sound. Bzz. A buzzing sound. Bzz. 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 Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, are you ready? Simple movement patterns are the essence of dance. The counts one, two, three, four are used in dance as kids learn what comes next. You can do things like one, two, three, kick like we did, or other things like left, stomp, right, stomp, and repeat, making all kinds of patterns. What parent does not want their kids to get all of their energy and wiggles out by the end of the day? This was a great way to do that. After your kids have danced around the house, maybe you have a few older children that need a bit more of a challenge. Have them either write on a piece of paper and draw out shapes, or you can cut out shapes like we did, and have each shape represent a sound. Maybe you have a budding songwriter and they want to create their own music. Have them create their own song using the shapes. So turn on the music, make your own, and let the musical patterns play. Rock out with your kids and they are going to have a blast and have no idea that they are learning math skills for way further on in life. Hi everyone, today we're gonna teach you how to make homemade putty. It's a super simple activity and helps strengthen those muscles in your kids' hands, getting them ready for writing. Lotion, Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Corn starch is a little bit uh, fluffy, so. I'm on dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Corn starch. Scented or unscented lotion, food coloring, measuring cups, mixing bowls, essential oils, flavor extracts, or scented lotion, mixing spoons, placemats. Okay guys, ready to get started? Yeah! All right, today we're gonna show you how to make homemade putty. It's super simple. All you'll need is a cup of cornstarch. Rachel, why don't you take the cornstarch and dump it in there. Okay. There you go. About three to four ounces of lotion. You can use scented or unscented, totally up to you. Oh, and then hold it to the side and she might be able to scoop some out with that. There you go. Scoop it out. Next, you're gonna mix it really well together. Can I mix it? Yep, go ahead and mix can it. Can I use a spoon? Yep. Do we need a little more lotion? Yeah, maybe. I think so. It's not Here, Benjamin. School. There, we, some need, we need more, it's like kind of... Do we need more lotion? Yeah. I don't know. It feels oh. soft. Does it feel it soft? Feels Does it come soft, together? But it's no, not no. together. Unless we all smush it into a bowl. It's mm. not exactly coming together yet. You need more lotion, you think, Rach? Can I mix it with my hands? Sure. This is where your hands might get a little messy, but that's totally okay. And then we can put it in half, and you guys can put it on your placemats and, and kind of mix it on there. It's crumbly, like really crumbly. Yeah, well, just it's coming like... together then. If it's kind of crumbly, it's starting to stick yeah, together. Just... Yeah. I don't want to touch it with my hands. <laughs> I don't like getting as messy as sister, huh? My hands are up. Feel like Rachel lotion. likes diving in. I need more lotion. Oh, I think Benjamin does too. Mine's coming together. Look, Mama. Kind nice. Of Look, Benjamin. You have to like push it together like this. Need it. There need you go. it. I'm just going back. And need it. Looks need like it. you're building a snowman. So kneading it really, really well. The more you mix it, the better it comes together. If it's too sticky, you may want to add a little more cornstarch, or if it's too crumbly, you may need to add a little more lotion. And you should end up with a finished product like this. A little. How does it feel? Is it smooth? Mm -hmm. Is it sticky or is it? It's mine's really sticky. Mine's really not sticky. sticky at all. After your putty comes together, you can also add some food coloring. Now this is where it gets a little messy, so you may want to put on some gloves or put it in a Ziploc for easier mixing. Then, once it's all mixed together, you'll end up with some beautiful putties just like this. Okay, guys, are you ready to add some of your food coloring? Yeah. yeah. To color it? Let's take the gloves and put them on your hands. Because this is the part where it gets real messy. Do about two or three drops. Okay, and now add two or three drops of the red. 
and then start mixing, and then if we need to add more, we can. If you want to break it so you can stretch it and see if you can get that color in there, then. Look at that. mine, it's swirling. Nice. Look at my purple. Can I do my purple in? I, for the first okay. part, I need my gloves on. Okay, one, two, little drop. Three. Now can I have red? You certainly may. Mm. I like it, phone. Benjamin. Can I it's make nice. this one now? Silas, come see what we made. You can play too. Feel it. We've been making putty. <laughs> what does it feel like? Does it feel soft? In case we mix that some. Yes. Yeah. I see some green coming it in. It's hard. Silas. Well, what if you did all of the colors of the boy? Ooh, all of the colors. It would make brown. Yeah, I probably would make brown. Okay, Silas, let's see if you can put your handprint in it. Can you smash it down? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Want to make this activity a little more fun and interesting? Simply add smells to your putty. You can add scented lotion, essential oils, or flavored extracts. It's a lot of fun. You can ask your kids fun smells like garlic and see what their reaction is or add something refreshing like a lemon. It makes this activity not only a fun hands-on activity but it also stimulates your other senses like smell. We are going to have a smell test. I have different smells on the putty and you're gonna tell me what you think it smells like. You ready? Okay. That's mint. That's mint? That's mint. That's a mint? That you want to smell this one again? Mm -hmm. Lemon? Yeah? It smells like lemon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like that smell? I don't know what it smells like. You don't know what that is? Mm. <laughs> Do you smell it? Potato? Potatoes? <laughs> it looks like a potato. It smells like mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes? Do you know what that smell is in it? Garlic? Yeah, good job. <laughs> it smells like garlic. Good job, yeah, because we do put garlic in our mashed potatoes, don't we? Mm -hmm. You did good. I'm gonna see how the boys do. Benjamin, it's your turn. Come in here, buddy. Here's the first one. <laughs> what does it smell like? Vinegar. Okay. <laughs> Mint. Oh yeah? You don't know? Baking soda. Baking soda? <laughs> <laughs> what does that smell like? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> you don't know? Do you like that smell? No. All right. You did good. <laughs> All right. What do you think this smells like? A good smell. <laughs> what do you think that smells like? Mm. I like the smell of this one. Mm. I don't know. Don't know? Hmm. Yeah. What does that smell like? I don't know. You don't know what it smells like? Is it strong? Yeah? <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good guess. Mint? <laughs> this is the third one. What do you think that is? I don't know. Don't know? Is it strong? Do you like the smell? No, Rachel didn't like this one either. Ready? Last one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it a good smell or a bad smell? Good smell. You like that smell, huh? Are you guys ready for the big reveal? Yeah. Come on in here. And I will tell you what all of them were. Do you remember the first one? Lemon. I knew it was the a lemon. The first one was a lemon. Okay. Smell it now that you know it's Ooh. lemon. See, it doesn't it smell like a lemon. It does See, smell like a lemon. Okay. All right, the next okay. one that we did was? I knew it was a mint. I said that too. Peppermint. We all it was said mint. Did you like it? I said yeah, I liked it. But you I did say it. Mint. I did not like you it. You did not like <laughs> mint? Oh, I like I mint. You know what's so mint. interesting to me? What? None of you really liked this smell, but Rachel, you usually like. What is this? Look, Do you guys know what it is? Cinnamon. <laughs> yep, cinnamon. I hate this. You don't like it? I don't like you guess cinnamon. She did not. You guys guessed baking. I think you guessed baking soda, <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> Are you ready for the last I was, smell? I didn't even oh, guess this Now, one. Benjamin oh. did not like this smell at all. Did but I like Silas it? really liked this smell. I said potato. And you said it smelled like a potato. Do you know what, what this is? Onion? 
does kind of look like an onion. This is garlic. Oh, I said garlic, remember? That's right, because we put garlic in our potatoes. This is a smell you would like to make your putty smell like? No. No? You just want mama to stick to cooking with it? I would do lemon, yeah. <laughs> Good job on your smelling, guys. I hate Everyone that. give me five. All right. We hope you and your family had a lot of fun making this activity today. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Thanks so much for watching. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.